Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. For this tutorial I'm going to be a little more festive and we're going to make a fall fox jump skirt. This pattern is really great for beginners. It's very easy to follow along and it's definitely something that you can sew up within the day. I am going to be using just a regular woven cotton fabric. So tip number one, make sure you pre-wash your fabrics, especially if it's cotton because it will shrink. So I always end up getting about six inches more yardage than I need just to accommodate for whatever shrinking that may happen. I had a ton of this fabric in my stash and I've been dying to use it. So this seemed like the perfect project to use this fabric for. You're just gonna need some really basic sewing supplies besides your interfacing. I will be putting mine together in a size medium. Make sure when picking your size that you go by your measurements and not by ready to wear because there are great variations between the two and to get the most accurate size, it's just best to go by what the package says on measurements more than anything else. You can even reference the finished measurement sizes to give you an even better idea of what it's gonna fit like in the end. And all you'll need is a matching seven inch zipper and three one inch buttons to match your project. We will be using all pieces except for number 10 and 11. So the first thing of course you're gonna do is cut out all your pattern pieces and interfacing pieces. So normally we would fold our fabric in half lengthwise but unfortunately my fabric wasn't wide enough for the first few pieces, so I'm just gonna lay it flat out. This is definitely something that can happen when you wash your fabrics. All it will take is a little alteration. The first piece I'm doing is number two, which is the front skirt. Now since my fabric wasn't wide enough, I'm going to actually cut two pieces instead of cutting one on the fold. Of course, if this pattern fits with your fabric folded in half, just make sure that that center front is lined up with the fold of the fabric. I have a directional fabric, so I'm just gonna line up my center front as best as I can with the direction of the fabric. So since I'm cutting out two, I need to connect these pieces later on. So we're gonna add a little seam allowance to the center front. So I'm just gonna grab my ruler and I'm gonna add a 3 8 inch seam allowance only to that center front line. And this is where I'm gonna cut. And then all I'm gonna do is take this pattern piece and lay it the opposite way so that I have two opposite pieces. You definitely don't want two of the same because it won't work out. So whenever a pattern says cut two, you're always cutting two pieces that are opposite of each other. The next piece is going to be my back skirt piece and same thing we're going to cut two of these as well. On this specific pattern piece it has a green line. You're going to line this up parallel with the salvage edge of your fabric which is basically the finish ends of the piece of fabric you're using. Then once you have that lined up you can go ahead and pin it down. Again, I'm gonna flip this piece over so that I have two opposite pieces. We're gonna cut two bib pieces. So normally this is what you would do. You would fold your fabric in half, line up your grain line, pin it, and cut it out. Since this is a basic square, it doesn't matter which direction your fabric is facing if you're using a directional fabric. I'm just doing this because I'm trying to use up the scrap edges from when I cut off the skirt pieces so that none of my fabric goes to waste. But normally you wanna fold the fabric over so that if you're cutting two pieces, the fabric is still going the same direction. That way one side doesn't come out right side up and the other side comes out upside down. From here with our front waistband, you're gonna cut two on the fold. And then your left back waistband and your right back waistband, you're gonna cut two. They will both have grain lines, so once again, you're gonna follow the direction of the grain line when you're pinning these pieces down.
for the straps, it also has a green line that you'll follow and you're gonna cut two pieces of these. We have the pocket going on your bib and this one you're just going to cut one following your grain line. For your inside pockets, we're going to need to cut four, so that's going to be two of each opposite. So you're going to cut two one way and two the other. Once all the pieces are cut out, we're going to go and cut out all the pieces for the interfacing. For the most part, just make sure that the glue side of your interfacing is face down if you're just going to be cutting one piece. And with interfacing, the grain line won't matter. So you can face it any direction you want to get your piece cut out. If you need to cut two, then you're going to fold it wrong sides together so that you're still getting your opposite pieces since the glue is only on one side of your interfacing. Before we start assembling all of our pieces together, you're going to go and mark all the little dots that are on your pattern pieces as well as marking your notches. So the way that I do this is I'll take a sewing pin and I'll poke it through one of the dots that I'm going to mark. Just straight through is fine. And I'm going to grab my chalk or fabric pencil that you're using and I'm just going to rub it right where the needle is on the fabric. I'm going to do a mark on the nice side of the fabric for each piece that I have. I just find that most of the time it's easier to see them on the right side of the fabric when I need to match these dots up later on. So go ahead and do this for all your pattern pieces. If there's any extra things to mark, this would include buttonholes, placement lines, fold lines, center fronts, center backs, ribbon or applique placements. I usually like to mark these things as well because a lot of the times they do come in at some point during the pattern later on. When it comes to notches, the easiest way to mark your notch is to just take your scissors and you're just going to make a little snip in the center of the little triangle. It's not necessary to cut that far into your fabric, so just cutting inside of the little triangle is enough. So just go ahead and go on through and mark all your dots and notches in your pattern pieces. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to iron on our interfacing pieces that we've cut out. So we have a bib piece, all three pieces of your waistband, and your two straps. You're going to iron this onto the wrong side of your fabric, but the piece that you're ironing it to should be the front piece that you want people to see. And now we can go ahead and start assembling. Grabbing the number one piece or your back skirt piece, we're gonna open these up and we're gonna line up the back center opening with right sides together. There should be a small dot that you've made which is where the zipper is going to end. So once you find it, you're gonna place a pin horizontally to mark it and then you can pin the rest of this seam closed 
pinning vertically. We're gonna sew this seam together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. So to start off, you're gonna do a base stitch or your longest stitch from the top all the way down to the horizontal pin. Once you reach the pin, you can pull that out and then the rest of the way you're gonna do a normal, regular stitch. Once this is done, you're gonna open up your seam and iron this open. Grab your seam ripper and we're gonna take out the seam that we had just made with the base stitch. You're just gonna go down to the dots that we marked. This is where your zipper is gonna go. So we're gonna grab our zipper and we're gonna line up that little metal notch at the bottom with the very edge of the bottom opening that we've made so that the right side of the skirt edge lines up perfectly with the right side of the coils. I'm gonna place a pin at the bottom to hold the zipper in place and then I'll place my pins up the side. Then we can go ahead and sew down the right side. When you get to your machine, you're gonna use a zipper foot. Mine looks like this. And I'm gonna place it to match up with the right side of my sewing. And starting at the top, you're just gonna sew a straight line all the way down, sewing the fabric down as close to the coils as you can. I did this the hard way a little bit. Next time I would unzip the zipper a little bit, sew that small part down, and then put the zipper back up and then continue sewing instead of trying to hover around the pull tab of the zipper. Go ahead and stop sewing once you get to the bottom of that little notch. Now we're gonna work on lining up the left side and you wanna place the edge of the left side just over the coils and slightly past so that your zipper is completely hidden. Once again, I'll place another little pin at the bottom to hold that in place and then I'll pin up the sides. And we're gonna sew this edge down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So going back to your zipper foot, we're gonna switch it to the other side to line up with our sewing. And you're just gonna sew straight down. This time I did open the zipper first. And then once I sewed down about a couple inches, I maneuvered the pull tab back up, closing the zipper, and continued sewing down. Once you get to that little silver notch on your zipper at the bottom, just slow a little bit past that, and then you're gonna turn your fabric, sewing horizontally under that notch up to that center seam. And I'm just gonna go over it with a little back stitch so that it stays in place. This is what we have so far. Now moving to the outside edge of our skirt with your right side up, we're gonna start working with our side pockets. So you're gonna grab one piece and place it right sides together with your skirt, matching the top edge or the dots that you marked on your pocket and skirt. Then you can pin this down and you'll do the same to the other side. We're gonna sew these on with the 1 4th inch seam allowance. Grabbing our iron with right sides face up and we're gonna iron this down as well as the other side. And then we're going to top stitch a 1 16th inch seam allowance, which is basically what it is. You're going over the top of your fabric and we're pretty much sewing the pocket to that tiny bit of seam allowance underneath. This stitch will hold your pocket in place later on and your pocket won't start to wiggle out as you wear it. Put this aside and we're gonna work on our front skirt pieces. If you were able to cut on the fold, then you can skip this part. Line up your front center seam with right sides together. Go ahead and pin it and then we'll sew it with a 3 8 inch seam allowance that we added earlier. Just like the back, we're gonna iron open this seam and we'll add the pockets same way we did with the back skirt. So you're gonna match them to the top edge of each side with right sides together 
and we'll sew these with a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Opening the pocket and skirt up with right sides face up. We're gonna iron these down and then a top stitch of a 1 16th inch seam allowance. We're gonna lay these skirt pieces right sides together, matching up your pockets and the edges. So there should be two dots that we've marked on our pockets and we're gonna place a horizontal pin at both of these dots so that we know where they are. And then you can pin the whole bottom edge together and that little top section. And then we're gonna pin around the outside edge of the pocket. And we'll do this to the other end as well. We're gonna sew these seams closed with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. So we're going to start at the top and you're just going to sew down to that first horizontal pin and do a small back stitch to hold in place and then you're going to go all the way down to the next horizontal pin and start sewing from there all the way down. Doing a small back stitch and last we're going to start at the top of our pocket. Sew all the way around the pocket. Make sure you go slow around the curve. Take your time and I'm gonna sew all the way in to that other 5 8 inch seam allowance we have made. And you'll sew this the same way to the other side. Grab some scissors and we're going to make two snips on the seam allowance right under the pocket. Make sure not to cut past the thread. We can now open up these bottom seams and iron them open. As well as you're going to iron down the pocket, making sure the pocket is facing the front of your skirt. At the top of our skirt, we're gonna add two gathering base stitches, making sure to stop and start around the pockets. So for our gathering base stitch, we're gonna start with a tail of three to four inches of thread. Using your longest base stitch, we're gonna start with a 1 16th inch seam allowance. Once you get right before that pocket, you're gonna stop and you're gonna leave another three to four inches of thread. And we're gonna do the same thing, but this time at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Remember to leave your tail of thread at the beginning and end as well. Go ahead and do the same thing to the other two sections. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Going to our waistband pieces, I'm going to start with the interface pieces first. Laying the right side on the right and the left side on the left with right sides faced together. And then you're gonna do the same with the pieces without interfacing. And we're gonna sew these ends together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grab your scissors and we're just gonna cut off some of that excess seam allowance, leaving about 1 4th of an inch. Go ahead and iron all four of these seams open. Going with the pocket piece for our bib, I'm gonna fold down the top at the fold lines that I've marked earlier, folding right sides together. And you're gonna place a pin on each end to hold that down. And we're gonna sew this down with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Get your scissors and we're gonna snip off the corners, which is gonna help this point out nicely when we turn it out. Then we can flip this using a chopstick or a pencil to help you poke out those corners nice and neat. From here we're going to iron down the two seam allowance sides and press the top as well and then fold up the bottom edge to the same seam allowance. We'll do a 1 16th inch top stitch just on that top fold that we've made 
taking our front bib piece, which is the one without the inner facing, match up your pocket with the pocket marks that you've made on your bib. We can pin this in place and then we'll sew it down with a top stitch of a 1 16th inch seam allowance, leaving the top open. When you start sewing, make sure you do a little back stitch at the top to secure it. We're gonna do a continuous seam. So once you get to about 1 16th inches from the bottom, leave your needle down, lift your presser foot, Pivot and line up your fabric to the next direction. Place your foot down and continue sewing. And you'll do this for every little point that you get to. Make sure to batch stitch when you get to the top of your pocket. Taking the bib piece with the inner facing, we're gonna lay this right sides together and we're gonna pin down the sides and the top this time. We're gonna sew these edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's done, we're gonna clip off the corners again and flip this inside out. And then take your iron and we're gonna press this so it's nice and neat. Then we'll top stitch the same edges with the 1 16th inch seam allowance. Grabbing our front waistband piece, or the one without the inner facing, we're gonna lay that right sides together, matching the edges with the bib with the dots on your center waistband piece. Line up the bottom edge and pin this down. We'll sew this on with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. The straps will be next. So we're gonna fold these together lengthwise with right sides face together and we'll pin this down. And then we're going to sew down the long side and the short straight side with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, we're gonna cut off the excess seam allowance leaving about 1 4th of an inch left and snip off a little bit of the corners that we sewed as well. Then using a chopstick or a pencil, you're gonna flip these right side out. Make sure to poke out those corners as you go. Take your time and lay these out nicely and then we will iron these down so they're nice and neat. Last, we're gonna do a top stitch of a 1 16th inch seam allowance from one side across the short side and all the way back down the other. Making sure to do the pivot and turn at the corners. Going back to the bib and waistband piece we sewed earlier, we're gonna line up our straps with the dots on our waistband. Making sure that the straps are angled away from your bib. Sew these on with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then grab your second waistband piece with the inner facing and we're gonna lay this right sides together with the other waistband. Go ahead and pin that bottom edge together, lining up the edges and the seams. Then we'll sew this on with the 5 8 inch seam allowance as well. We're gonna cut off some of the excess 
seam allowance by doing a grading effect. So you wanna leave the ends normal and start about an inch toward the center. And you wanna slowly angle in till you're leaving a 1 4th inch seam allowance. Cut all the way across and then you're gonna slowly turn back out when you get to about an inch from the other end. Open up your waistband and you're going to fold them wrong sides together. And try your best to lay this out really nice and neat on that seam and we're gonna press this down so it's nice and neat. Grabbing our skirt, we are now going to attach the waistband to the skirt. So only taking the waistband without the interfacing, match the center front seams together. Then you can match the side seam of your skirt with the right seam on your waistband and the other side seam of your skirt with the left seam of your waistband. Now we're going to know how much to gather each section. To start gathering, you're gonna grab your top two threads on one end and you can go ahead and pull while holding on loosely to the fabric and it will slowly start to gather. Then you can slowly guide these gathers back so you have room to make more. And you're just gonna continue this till it's gathered and lined up perfectly with that waistband section. Do this to the other two sections you've made. When it comes to that outer left side section, you're gonna gather it to match up with the dots that you've made on the end of your waistband. So I'm just lining up the edge of that fabric next to the zipper with that dot. And then on the right side, you're going to do the same, but the dot will be a little farther inward, so you should have a little more hangover on the end than the left side does. Once all these sections are gathered, you're going to go back and move around the gathers so they're evenly distributed in each section and you can place another pin to help hold this more in place. We're gonna sew these together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to start and stop sewing around the pockets. Once this is sewn on, Take your left side pocket and line it up with the edge of your skirt facing toward the front and pin that down. And then do the same to the right side pocket making sure it's facing toward the front as well. Now we can sew these down with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once again, we're going to cut off the seam allowance. So you want to start about an inch inward, curving into the 1 4th inch seam allowance, and then curving outward, leaving an inch on the other end. Grab your iron, and we're going to press the seam allowances toward the center of the waistband. This will help everything lay nicely. Go ahead and do this all the way across. Mm -hmm. 
Going to our left side end of our waistband, we're going to fold this right sides together, lining up the edges. And pin this in place. And we're going to sew this closed, lining up with the edge of that back zipper. Then going to the right side and waistband, same thing you're going to do right sides together, pin it in place, and we're going to sew about a 3 8 inch along the edge and then a 5 8 inch along the bottom in toward that zipper edge. So here's the left side lining up with that back edge. And here is the right side, starting with the 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way down. And then turning it to sew up the bottom edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance in toward the zipper edge. Snip off your excess seam allowance and the corner on your right side and we're going to turn these out. Now we're going to start pressing down the bottom of that waistband. So you can see where we've made our last seam allowance and we're going to fold over the bottom edge of our waistband so that it goes slightly past these last stitches. So take your time and line it out nice and neat and then you're going to take your iron and press this down. Then you can place a pin to hold it in place. Do this all the way across. Once you've gone all the way across, you're going to remove the pins and place them on the front side of your skirt. We're going to sew this down by stitching in the ditch, which is basically in that little tiny gap between the waistband and the skirt. So you're going to take your time and slowly sew this down. Try your best to stay right in the middle and not go too far off. So doing small tiny sections at a time is best. So if you've done this correctly and you fold it over your waistband just enough, if you look on the back, you should have caught all of your waistband in the stitch. And in the front, it should be very well hidden if you've done it correctly. We're going to top stitch the waistband down with the 1 16th inch seam allowance, making sure to pivot around your corners. going to hem the bottom of our skirt. I'm starting by folding it over 3 8 inches and ironing it down all the way around. Since this is on a curve, you want to take your time and lay the fabric nicely so it doesn't pucker. I'm going to sew this with the 1 16th inch seam allowance and then I'm going to fold it over again another 3 8 inches, ironing it down. It might be a little harder this time, so just take your time ironing. Then sew this with the 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. The last part to this jump skirt is sewing on the buttons and making button holes. Starting with button holes, I'll show you what I do with my machine. Mine comes with a button hole foot that looks like this. 
I'm going to open it up and place my button so it knows how big the hole must be. And then I'll add this to my machine. Which requires me to pull down this lever as well. I'm going to line up one end of the buttonhole that I've marked inside the little square that's marked and centered and as lined up as I can. I like really tight and neat buttonholes, so I'm using the shortest stitch that my machine will go. And all I have to do is press the pedal down and it'll pretty much make the buttonhole itself. And I like to usually go over this twice just to make it extra secure. If your machine doesn't make buttonholes, you can still do this yourself. You're going to do a straight stitch slightly to the left from the top to the bottom of the line that you marked. This is just to help act as a guide. Then you're going to select your zigzag stitch, once again using the shortest stitch that you have. And you're going to start at the top of that line, making sure that it's lined up with the middle of your zigzag stitch and you're going to zigzag stitch over it all the way down. Then we'll repeat this process slightly to the right of the line that you've made. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch above these two lines on one end. So you're going to make a wider zigzag stitch that will get across from one line to the other line. This may take some practice and playing with your machine stitches a little bit, but I'm just going to do about four or five zigzag stitches on one end and the same on the bottom end. To open this up, you're going to grab a seam ripper and you're going to slowly poke at one end in the middle of your buttonhole. And you want to go as slowly as you can to make that hole just a little bigger. Then once it's big enough, you can take a small pair of scissors and finish cutting open the center. Make sure not to go past any of the threads that you've made. This is the one I made myself, so you're just going to clip off whatever little excess threads there are to clean it up. Here's the one that my machine made. So same thing, I'm just gonna make a little hole with my seam ripper and then I can continue cutting with scissors to be more precise. You can see it comes out a little bit neater, but the interfacing does help as well. Grab your needle and thread, tie a knot on the end and all we have left is to sew on all of our buttons. that's pretty much it. I've been getting a lot of requests for a beginner tutorial so I hope that this satisfies all you guys that have been looking for something that breaks down an easy pattern and quick sew has some really great easy patterns that are easy to do. This doesn't require a lot of sewing notions and includes a ton of really basic techniques that you will definitely run into with other patterns. Although it only shows a very basic look on the pattern itself, this can be altered in a ton of different ways. And I'm hoping in the future, since I really like this pattern a lot, I definitely want to give it a cosplay twist to it. Also making this pattern in really basic colors will make it a really great staple in your wardrobe. I really love the fullness of the skirt 
which is flattering with or without a petticoat. If you'd like to add a petticoat to get that nice fullness, I will leave a link down below for my petticoat tutorial. Since I use this really festive fabric, I think it really made this a fun holiday outfit. And of course it has pockets and who doesn't love pockets? Especially when they're so easy to add. I want to thank you all for watching this tutorial and I hope you have a great Thanksgiving and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye!